We are giving away a PlayStation 5 and an Xbox Series S on the 12 days of foot trading. 10 other prizes also being given away to you guys that are subscribed to the website. So if you want to support the content, you want to learn how to trade, make millions of coins, and join an awesome community playing in tournaments with people, it's the best place to be. Check out foot trading, subscribe, help yourself never to need to spend EA points again. But for now, let's get into the video. Yo, welcome back to a new video. I'm Fuzzball40. If you're new around here, subscribe down below, click the like button and drop a comment. The best comment will be pinned. Apologies for lack of videos, but we've been working behind the scenes um, on the website. Dan's brought a new feature up for fluctuations to help you guys filter out the cards you don't want to see. With that in mind, don't forget, we are giving away a PlayStation 5, an Xbox Series S and 10 other prizes. It's nearly £2,000 worth of stuff being given away to you guys. So if you want to support the channel, subscribe over there. You'll make millions and you have a chance to win a load of awesome prizes for Christmas. But uh, this video is basically me showing you guys something I've talked about in most of the other promos and how you can make some of the easiest coins you'll ever make on this game. It's just about spotting patterns, basically. Um, at the moment, we've got Dynasties in pack, okay? Ultimate Dynasties. Now, this is an awesome, awesome promo. Really cool idea. I'm a massive fan of it. But no matter what the promo is, there have been one similarity between all of them, and that is the rise in the cards once they reach their low, okay? Now, it might sound obvious to say, well, when a card goes to the lowest, it's going to go up eventually. That is true to a certain degree, but we're going to look at Radioactive first. I'm going to show you that on the desktop. There we go. This is the Radioactive team, um, and I talked about this last week, and there's a reason why I talked about this, because of this. Okay, this is Joe Gomez's um, Thunderstruck card. He is currently 70,000 coins. When we talked about investing in him, it was the Monday after he went out of packs, and at his low, he was 36, I think we talked about him at, and he got to 40, and he boomed and bounced and bounced and bounced. Now, you have to bear in mind, some of this rise is down to linkable cards. This extra sort of boost yesterday um, into him probably had a little bit to, to do with the fact that Sir Bosch Live is going to be able to be used as an evolution. It got leaked early on, but... Either way, he has absolutely flown through the roof. Now, it helps with these cards that they get upgraded. Obviously, it means they've got more of a value elsewhere. Um, but it's nevertheless, it's been a relatively similar pattern. So Zinchenko, for example, 165. Now, again here, it's not going to show you their full low point on the graphs here. Because on the Sunday and Monday, they get a lot lower. So I know that lowest of Zinchenko was about 132. He's now at 165, okay? So dipped off. And as you see, he climbed here. That doesn't seem like a massive, massive climb from 146 to 150. He was higher than that without a doubt. Obviously, since then, he's boomed, so it's irrelevant. Masrawi again, 237 here at his low, as they say, was on the Monday at 225. And then again on the Wednesday at 223. Again, that is not true on the Monday. He was down as low as 205 um, in the low point of the market. So he's done well rising. Kante, again, Kante's low point. That 892 mark on the Monday is now 980. Big rises there. Oshwala. Again, what, 396 at her low point there was 401. She got up to 414. And again here, this 401 is not true. She was 370 that day. But they've all had a boom and a rise and a drop or whatever you want to say. But Araujo, this is a consistent theme. It's, it's a really consistent theme. Now, I'm showing you guys the more expensive players. And there's a reason for that, okay? When I bring a video out, I will show a lot of players. And what happens is, is you will go and buy the exact player you see in the videos, okay? You'll go and, you'll go and buy the exact players you see in the video. The problem with that is, it sort of artificially inflates the price. I can look at post a video at 6pm and see that you guys have all gone and bought three Gringolo Gantes, if I talked about him. And it's just, I've got to be a little bit careful about how I say go and buy these cards, basically. Because I also, I'm here to help you trade um, and learn how to trade more than that. So if we look at Footwiz and we do all promo squads, you've got Ultimate Dynasties icons, Ultimate Dynasties. You can play about with both of them. Having a look at these cards is going to be pretty crucial. Now, you, you really want to be looking at the cards that are the most usable, really. They're the cards that are going to be the most interesting cards to go with. The likes of a Timber isn't someone that I really care about, this Timber anyway, because I don't think that many people are going to link him up to anyone. He's an area of his e-card. However, this Timber... Durian Timber, people may look at and think, right, actually, I'm going to have a little look of this card and think maybe he can be someone I buy into. I don't know why it says headliner there. That's really, really weird. Um, but it is what it is. These cards are cards that I've just been looking at consistently, just thinking, right, have they got a rise in them? Have they got low enough? And then the best thing you do is you compare them to other cards. 
So Julian Timber, I see him at 240,000 pounds now, 240,000 coins even, I wish. Um, I'm going to show you Gavardio, okay? Very similar cards. Josco Gavardio is 156k. So to me, I look at Timber, and right now I don't think he's a buy. I think he will get lower. But he'd need to get quite far down for me to be that interested in buying him. You can just compare them to other cards, and it will give you the best possible opportunity to know whether to pick these cards up or not. And there are loads, there's three or four already that I've seen and think, yeah, that card's too cheap. Um, but you sort of need to, just need to compare, basically. It's about comparing. Now, the icons. These icons are cool. There's a lot of very good ones. There's a lot of meh ones. Like having Veron having a really usable card is nice to see. With these cards here, as you can see, the different sort of cards based upon ratings and whatever, you've got to be a little bit careful just because there are different types. You've just got to bear that in mind. But if you want to know if a card's a decent buy, what I would recommend you doing is compare that card to the price that his base was, okay? So if you look at Larson, Larson's coming in at 66k for his 88 rated card. Now if we're going to get 86 rated card, he's 65k, okay? So, again, there doesn't seem to be much sense in this Larson card being as cheap as his base card. Now admittedly, his base card does have a min price. So we'll look at the 87 and you can see that it's 30,000 coins. But people may eventually twig and go, hang on, that 88 can't really be cheaper than the 86. It doesn't make any logical sense. It's a weird way EA have done this. It is a really weird way they've done it. But again, these cards will be decent to look at. You've just got to compare them to where the 86 was prior to these cards coming out. It's relatively easy to do that. It doesn't take much um, thought process or much brain work really to know if these cards are good to buy into or not, okay? So you guys can do that. Now, something else you need to think about are the FC Pro Live cards that are relevant for this week. Now, Simakan, I talked about him about a week ago, and he was down at like 21, 22K. He has absolutely rocketed since then because we're getting close to it now, and obviously Anders is his player, probably going to get a couple of upgrades, so he has boomed. They've all done this. Every single one of them tends to climb in the hype. Now, bear this in mind. If Simakan gets a couple of upgrades, he will continue to rise, in my opinion. If he doesn't, he will probably fall quite heavily. So you've got to make the decision between now and the game starting on Monday as to whether you want to take your profit and get out. Is it too late to buy? Not necessarily. If Simakan sits around this price and Anders plays and wins, chances are his price will go up. However, what does tend to also happen is everyone then lists their cards up because they go, right, I've got great profit, and we see a lot of drop in the market. That can also be a really good time to buy. If he gets an upgrade and he dips, which we see happen so often, road to knockout, we saw it happen, we saw it in Thunderstruck. If that happens, it can usually be a very nice sign to buy. If there's a demand enough for him to be at 35,000 in the hype, there's surely demand enough for him to be at 35,000 as an 86 rated card. So you've just got to think about it really, really sensibly, okay? Really sensibly. I will be live on Twitch directly after this video. If you've got questions and queries, you can come over there and get involved. I will help you as much as I possibly can to make coins and grind this game. That is the whole aim of this. As I said before, check out Foot Trading. We guarantee you'll make millions and you'll have the chance to win awesome, awesome prizes on the 12 days of Foot Trading. It supports our content and you get to join an exclusive community of awesome people. And you get to play in our cash prize tournament, actually. I forgot to say that. But that's the end of the video. I'm out. Peace out. I'll speak to you soon.